If you're someone who deals with post-traumatic stress disorder, this video is for you. But first, I want to show you the new part of the video I'm working on for Focus Prospecting. I love this little bit. It's an escape from all the mosquitoes. It's <laughs> oh man, the mosquitoes are really bad this year because of all the water on the ground. Anyway. So it's been a minute since I've talked about post-traumatic stress disorder on my main channel, Vogus Prospecting, and I had something happen today that I thought was worth talking about, so let's just go for a deep dive straight into it. I got triggered. I haven't been triggered like that in a while. So a trigger is very easy to understand. It's nothing more than your nervous system trying to protect you by recognizing patterns that may have happened to you in the past that were dangerous. For a really basic example, it might be like once you stepped on a snake and it scared the absolute crap out of you and maybe you walk out into your back garden and see your garden hose on the ground where your central nervous system can't tell the difference between a snake and a garden hose and it freaks out and it puts you into fight flight. Well, it's a little bit more complicated than that because fight, flight is actually fight, 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 flight, faint, or freeze. It'll put you into one of those four things. Now, that's a very generalized example that most people can understand. When it comes to post-traumatic stress disorder, usually you're talking about a traumatic event. And again, the problem with the trigger is that your nervous system doesn't understand the difference between the actual danger that you were in some time ago and what is happening now and that's because the nervous system is dysregulated is is unable incapable of filing those memories away and essentially your nervous system is stuck back there and this is a problem right because when you get triggered you get put into fight flight over something like a garden hose which is ridiculous because you know consciously that that garden hose is no threat to you whatever at whatsoever but your nervous system is giving you the physiological response that you are in danger and that is what a panic attack is because of being triggered so you've been triggered your nervous system is preparing you to fight or faint or freeze or run away it's preparing you to basically go to war which is not good when you're in, like, a doctor's office, for example. <laughs> or, like, a family barbecue. It just doesn't... It's not the time or place, nervous system. But there's a way you can kind of get... Not around it, but help yourself through it. This is some super generalized advice, and I encourage anyone who's dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder to seek proper medical attention. And I highly recommend a treatment called EMDR. That works very well. Uh, there are a few other types around that will help and they've helped me in the past. It's helped me to the point where I haven't had one of these types of panic attacks in a long time. Oh, but today, oh, today, I basically, my panic attack started because I made a phone call and I made a phone, it wasn't the phone call, it wasn't who I was talking to, it wasn't what I was talking about, and nothing to do with that. It's just that my nervous system, it took me a while to figure out exactly what it was. My nervous system realized it was like the same weather and the same sort of context that I was, that, that I had a thing happen to me. And it was, um, spicy to say the least it was very spicy the way that i get myself out of these now which is uh after the product of a lot of uh, i've done a lot of emdr and i've done a lot of um grounding techniques and i and i've dealt with my shit i've dealt with my problems right so it's easier for me to say this than what it is to do it in practice but this is what i do the first thing that I do when I get into one of those situations, I have to try to recognize that I'm in fight flight. And sometimes that's very difficult, but most of the time you'll have a tell. So maybe you'll get angry. So usually I go into fight, which makes me angry, annoyed, upset, cranky, because that anger is going into fight to try and get you to fight your way out of one of those situations. Um, so if you can, re first of all, you've got to get recognition of what happens when you're triggered. So if you're able to pay attention, keeping a diary is a really good way of doing that because you can break it down after it happens and that helps you pick up on it when it's happening to you. So once you've identified that you're in the middle of a panic attack because you've been triggered, you then have to identify how old that feeling is, which sounds a bit weird. What I mean by that is your nervous system is quite literally stuck at the age that the trauma happened to you. That's It's reverting back to it. That's why it's called post-traumatic stress disorder. It is a revert to a younger version of yourself. Your body hasn't physiologically filed away those memories so you can't handle the current situation like it's a new situation, which it is. Your body's handling like it was 
six months ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, however long ago it was. So identify how old that feeling was. Are you a 15 year old? Are you a 20 year old? Are you an eight year old? Now I bring up younger ages because you pretty much can't have post-traumatic stress disorder unless you had a dysregulated childhood. Now, I'm not saying that you can't have it. I'm just saying it's most likely that you did have a dysregulated childhood if that was the case. And, and the simple reason for that is that you learn coping mechanisms when you're younger that are fine for a child in that moment but they don't carry so well through when you're an adult. And usually you can learn those coping mechanisms from the time that you were born up until about the time that you're about 20 to 25 thereabouts. Which means that say you had something very traumatic happen to you when you were five or six years old, when you get triggered, there's every odd chance that you'll get stuck into behaving like a five-year-old, but with adult energy. Have you ever wondered why Karen's go off their nut and act like an absolute toddler? I can almost guarantee, I would bet money on it, that those people had something happen to them when they were toddlers or young children. So they end up treating the world like they are a child. And it doesn't have to just be one age, it can be multiple ages, right? So anyway, the point is, you get triggered, you recognize it, then you figure out how old it is. So say it's like a 15-year-old. Well, what does a 15-year-old need? Like, what does a 15-year-old need when they're going through a situation where they're in over their head in their ability to cope with it? I'd argue a lot of you would say they need direction. Like, they need help and assistance from an adult. So if you have a 15-year-old who's going through some really complicated stuff, what do they need? They need advice and possibly help, like maybe physical help to do the task that they've got to do to get through it. Maybe they need emotional support, whatever it might be. You have to identify the age because you then have to become the parent to yourself. You have to give that support to what the 15-year-old needs. Remember, we're dealing with the central nervous system here. It's not a conscious thing. You, can, you can't you can reason your way out of fight flight. It doesn't work like that. It's an ingrained automatic response. So the way that you do that is that you teach yourself the proper coping mechanisms today. So for me, it was like I had to figure out how old I was. And once I worked that out, I was like, what do I actually need? Well, once I worked out what I actually needed, what the younger version of myself needed, I can then give it to myself. Sometimes that's as simple as being like, hey, no, you're actually doing okay. You're doing your best and you don't need to beat yourself up about this. And I'm not going to punish myself for not getting this thing absolutely correct. Maybe it's just giving yourself permission to take a break, or maybe it's giving yourself the motivation to push through the thing that you need to do. Whatever it is, you have to treat yourself like you needed to be treated at the age that the original trauma happened. This might sound like total and other bullshit to a lot of people, but it's it's legit. I have lived this for the better part of most of my life, and I have been in the fortunate position today to be on the back end of all the hard work, all the psychological appointments, all the stuff, blah, 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 blah. I've done the work and I know that this stuff genuinely works. So the next time you get triggered, just ask yourself if you can recognize it, how old am I and what does that part of me need? Or should I say, what part of my younger self, what does that need? And for anyone, because I always get comments when I put up PTSD videos about toughen up and be a man and I went through some stuff and, you know, oh, it didn't affect me. I guarantee you it affected you if you're leaving those comments. And I don't really care about that. And for everyone else who's watching this, you do you. You're allowed to support yourself through these things. You can be the parent you needed back in the day. You can be the person... Uh, that inspires yourself to become better at life, become the person that you want to become. Don't let those people bring you down. There's no point even letting them take up any room in your head. Well, uh, the last thing I want to leave you with is this is generalized advice. I am not a psychologist. I've just, this is my lived experience. This may or may not work for you. It works for me and it works for several people I know, but 
Obviously, everyone has to tread their own path, so seek medical help if you do require more information about it. Uh, the place to get that is not on the internet, not on YouTube, that is with a good psychologist and a good doctor, and you can find them through Google reviews, so technically on the internet. <laughs> Alright guys, peace, bye!